Welcome, folks, to another James Bond review. Previously, I reviewed for Your Eyes Only, which, if I had to be honest, it'd be my second favorite Roger Moore Bond film. First would be The Spy Who Loved Me, but for Your Eyes Only, I know at the end of that review, I kind of rushed it because I had the 15 minute, 30 second. It really it would only go on for another minute or two just for me to say, For Your Eyes Only really surprised me. I thought it went at a good pace, I thought it was fun. It was entertaining. It was a fast pace. It uh, always kept me involved. Uh, decent action bits. Uh, it just kept me interested throughout. Uh, it never got dull for me. And Roger Moore was good. It was nice to see him. A little bit more of a badass in For Your Eyes Only. Like you did when he kicks that car down. When the bad guy's in it, it topples over. Which I know Roger Moore wasn't sure of, but ultimately he did it. The reason I want to talk about for you guys only more is to not talk much about this film, which is the film that came out after for you guys only, which I know Roger Moore wasn't really sure on coming back. He wasn't really sure on coming back for this one. And there was talk of Timothy Dalton. There was also talk of uh, James Brolin. Fucking James Brolin. He had, James Brolin actually did a screen test. But ultimately, I like, know you know it cannot be an American. It has to be someone British. And then the thing is, at the same time this came out, you had another this film come out, which there's a big story on how this film got released. It's not an official part of the franchise, but that'll be that review. That was coming out the same year, so it's like no, if we don't battle that. We want to have the guy who's been with us for a while, so they didn't want to start off with a new... Because Roger Moore was thinking of quitting after For Your Eyes Only. And there's a lot of people who say that he should have. But Octopussy, to be honest, this is, I thought, mediocre. I thought it was one of the more forgettable films. In fact, I could probably guess that more people remember the title more than the actual film. Uh, pretty much you have... Good opening. I like the opening bit where you have this little turbo jet. They call it here an Acro Star Mini Jet. Which is this vehicle, this little plane here. I like that bit of business where he's doing some stuff and he's going like through a hanger and um, it ends with him actually at a gas uh, station and he's like, fill her up, fill her up, please. <laughs> But I like that little action sequence with that. I thought that was really good. Um, but the the title song I didn't care for, and the plot isn't really much. It's something to do with the Soviet. There's you have a Soviet guy played by Stephen Burkoff, actually, bad guy in Ramble Two, Beverly Hills Cop, Stephen Burkoff. Uh, he's working with uh, what you find out is the main bi bad guy, which is Louis. Jordan, I think that's how you pronounce it, Louis Jordan, the bad guy from the movie Swamp Thing, I believe that was him, and basically what they're doing is, they're working with this girl, Octopussy, who, her, and she has this sort of cult of people in India who are their jewel smugglers, and she thinks it's just jewel smuggling, but it's not. Uh, Louis Jordan and Stephen Burke are what they're really trying to do is they're trying to think there's jewelry but to switch out with a, a bomb, a nuclear bomb because they want it to blow up an uh, Air Force base and make it seem like an accident and they use like a traveling circus to deal with it to go under the radar and the reason they want to do this is that you know even though a lot of innocent people will be killed uh, you're, they'll think, oh, it was an accident, and it'll help Europe try to do a disarmament, you know, getting rid of it, which will leave their defenses dropped so that Stephen Burkhoff and his Soviet troops can go in and sort of invade. Like I said before, plots are not really the biggest, strongest part of James Bond movies. Uh, Really, it's just not that interesting of a film. I thought it was slow paced. It's two hours and eleven minutes. It did not need to be that long. It didn't interest me. It didn't draw me in. I thought the actresses were few and far in between. But after that opening, it's 
another British agent you see he's in this clown disguise and he gets killed and he has this like Faberge egg and they look at it and uh, you know they deal with Roger Moore deals with this auction where he sweet you find out that the aid was fake and you know he switches off so that he has the real aid one thing leads to another just to India uh, beats the bad guy Louis Jordan and Batgammon and you get a little bit of like a car chase where he gets with his content you have a little bit of car chase more like a cart not a car chase cart chase and it's so so whatever and you get the feeling that they were trying to do a little bit like Raiders of the Lost Ark I don't know, just some elements. And I don't mean that in a positive way. I mean, it, it seemed like they were trying, to, which I was weird. I know Steven Spielberg always wanted to do a James Bond film. And he's like, well, I can't do a Bond film, but, you know, he can do you know, Raiders of Lost Art. I wish this had the spectacle of Raiders of Lost Art. It just, it doesn't work, whether it be... Uh, I like the little bit in that sequence where like he actually gets a sword from a sword swallower and bows a few folks. But then basically he gets seduced, he gets caught. You have a scene which I swear When was Temple of Doom? I'm trying to remember now. When was Temple of Doom? This was eighty three. I'm trying to remember when was Temple of Doom. I can't remember when Temple of Doom was. Is there a scene where uh, you know, it takes place around India, and, you know, someone is, Roger Moore served a grotesque dinner. Here is, like, a fucking stuffed sheep's head. I'm like, stuffed sheep's head? Really? And Louis Jordan, like, takes the eyeball out and eat it. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, and Bond escapes because he has a pen that's, like, an acid pen type thing. And, you know, he pretends to be a dead body and escapes. And then he did a scene that I just did not care for. Like he's running around the jungle and there's a tiger and he gets in some spider webs and he swings and I shit you not, there's a fucking scene where he actually swings and it's a fucking you hear the Tarzan yell, Oh Not from Roger Moore, like they actually took the sound that the Tarzan yell or oh I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Uh <laughs> what the fuck? I'm like, I'm like, what the hell? If you're wondering why in certain reviews I keep looking in this direction, because I don't know why, for some reason I just... This is the first time I've seen this, so I'm trying to... This one, I'm trying to wrap my brain around it. Uh, but he gets out of there, and then he goes to see Octopussy... He has this alligator disguise. I'm like, really? And there's another seduction scene. And I like this bit where he tries. He almost gets assassinated. Where I actually like this weapon this guy had. He had like a yo-yo, but it's like a buzzsaw yo-yo. I actually like that little sequence there. I like that little sequence. I must admit. Um, and yeah, he goes to a carnival. He finds out what's going on. That. You know, the time of bomb is going to be used. You know, the whole plot I talked about before. Uh, and basically, Bond, you know, he gets on the train and he's doing some this shit with the train. You know, there's Stephen Burke off and he has to high tail. He gets in the car. The car's tires get out and he drives the car into the tracks. And the train's coming for him because he's on another track so he's a jump from one to the other and he has some decent stunt work on top of the train where he's fighting this you know big guy you know he's on the side of the train then James Bond gets under the train then he gets on the top um, he gets some nice little stunt work in there and I appreciate that little bit of business um, but then like he disguises himself as a clown to get into this you know carnival this circus this carnival so you can get to the bomb in time and disarm it and, you know, didn't really care for any of that scene. Um, and then the train bits were alright, but it wasn't really... Uh, I know a stuntman got hurt during doing that, so, you know, kudos to the stuntman, and sorry that he got hurt doing it. But it, it, it was what it was. It wasn't really too bit of a deal for me. Uh... 
Octopussy and her women, you know, Octopussy knows that she was used by the villain, so her and her women sort of fight uh, the bad guys, thugs, which really isn't much, to be honest, didn't do much for me. Uh, God, I'm trying to think. Um, I like this bit of where James Bond slides down, like the stairs, like slides down and shooting some bad guys, and actually you get to the, you know, the pole that hit right on your nuts. And James Bond like shoots it off, so he slides right off. I like that little bit of business. <laughs> um, <clears throat> bad guy takes the the girl, and yeah, I like this stunt sequence at the end where James Bond is, gets on the wing of the plane and is like hanging on to the top of the plane. And really good stunt work, aerial work, stunt work on that sequence. And is fighting this guy and puts this thing back and slaps it right in the guy's face, so he falls off. And you did some nice stunt work there. <clears throat> but to be honest, that's why I couldn't rant on it 100%, because there's some little bit of decent stunt work. Like, I like the little the opening with the little uh, jet that he has at the beginning of the film. I like that bit of business. Um, I like, like Teeny Bits, like he gets the sword from the sword swallower and fights a guy a little bit, or... You know, the, the buzzsaw yo-yo thing. Um, I liked... Um, sliding down and, you know, shooting the thing in the little stun with the, the plane. Some good stun work. But the film just dragged for me. It got slow. Uh, Maud Adams, which I think she was actually in uh, Man with the Golden Gun... She was alright, you know, as Octopussy. I don't think she was a bad actress. It just w didn't interest me. It didn't intrigue me. It didn't pull me in. It kind of felt like at times... Uh, in a way, it's going to sound stupid. In a way, I just wanted to see Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom instead of seeing this. Or uh, I, It just didn't get me involved. I don't know. It, I got bored through a lot of it. It's too long. The music's not much. The song is lackluster. Uh, not enough action. I think there's too many slow spots. It, it drags. The plot wasn't really that interesting. Silly shit. Like, oh yeah, there, how can I forget? There's another moment where James Bond disguised himself in a fucking gorilla suit. So... You have James Bond disguised as a clown at one point, disguised in a gorilla suit, doing a fucking swing and you put a Tarzan yell, like a stock Tarzan yell from whenever those original Tarzan yell came from. It just didn't, wasn't really a fan of this film. You know, I would honestly say this is my least favorite of the Roger Moore stuff. This would be my least favorite. Just Other than some decent, a, a handful of decent stunts, stuff really mediocre and I know uh, this compete would never see never again in the same year and actually uh, this might have done a little bit better with critics but this one has a higher rating on IMDb and it made more money when it came out both in the US I think in the US I know worldwide and I think it actually made more money video rental wise so to be honest of you know, they were talking about, oh, it's the Battle of the Bonds. People thought that this would win. Definitely, it's Sean Connery coming back. And really, this one, again, made more money. It made more money, and it made more on the rental sales, and it has a higher rate on IMDb. I think it has a 6.8 or 6 or 8 or something like that, which I think is too high, to be honest. But, uh, but really, if I guess out of the two... Really, this one, so go figure. But uh, next time I'll talk about this one, which this will be. I know there's bad story behind this, so this might be a two parter. This one, when I talk about this, but either way, not much more to say about Octopussy. To be honest, I think this is one of the forgettable James Bond films, and I'll say it again I think the title is more memorable than really the movie. Either way, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you later.